I knew it, I knew it, even with my hoarse voice. Are you, well, it's okay. I think this is a lovely auditorium. The sound is fantastic. Um, for those of you who do not know, this is being streamed live. So if you have someone at home that is not able to make it today, you can send them a text message to go to livingmaths.com and they can actually watch it live while this is taking place. I can see you all pulling out your phones ready to tweet it or not. And essentially, um, livingmaths.com, as in we make maths come alive. Uh, many, many years back, I heard a story about a person who allegedly had taken himself off the grid. And that was a big deal for me. The fact that this person was not actually relying on ESCOM or pretty much anything else, he was becoming self-sufficient. And he had spent a lot of money doing it. And of course, he wasn't the only person. There are many others who've allegedly taken themselves off the grid. So I did some homework, and I found out it was someone that I actually knew. This happened to be David Lipschitz. And David Lipschitz, he will give you his background, he'll give you the context, because a lot of people, yes, we are all very hurtful with what's going on with ESCOM at the moment, but there's a lot of context that we're not aware of. And I think that he'll be able to give us a better understanding of where ESCOM is today, why they are there today, where we should be moving, because we, a lot of other countries around the world are doing things very differently to us. And we could learn from business models that actually work. And not only that, a lot of you are getting very frustrated with the fact that the power goes off, your TVs go off, life stops, you can't cook, you can't do a lot of things, and there are realistic and affordable options available. People talk about generators, they talk about inverters, they talk about Tesla battery cells. David is going to explain all of that. And hopefully, I'm going to try and push him to give us a rough estimate of, and he said it's very difficult to say what these things cost, but we can give you a rough estimate of an average household, and I can maybe give you an example of what happened with us as well, but at the end of the day, we want you walking out here feeling empowered, that you know what's going on with the electricity situation in South Africa, how others around the world are doing it, and hopefully, with David's connections, he will give us some insight into where ESCOM might want to be moving, because he is quite well connected. David is obviously a science graduate. He's also done an MBA and a whole bunch of other things. But he is the crazy guy that decided to spend a lot of money to do stuff in his house, which, if you think back to it, you could probably do a lot more for a lot less today. About a third of the price. But you will tell us all about that. So I think let's give David a warm round of applause. Not only is it a third of the price, but there's the inflation industry as well, so it's actually cheaper. <laughs> um, so you'll find out about this in my talk. I'd like you to keep all the questions till the end. Um, I've got 75 slides to get through. I asked Living Maths Stephen for 40 minutes, so it was meant to be 30. So it's really difficult to give a one or one and a half hour talk in 40 minutes or 30 minutes, but I've done my best. Um, and uh, let's get back. So I've got the science of the Chile considering we're in the science center. We're talking about science. There's going to be some formulas and things for us to think about in the presentation. Uh, here is a deep, this, this is a PV panel. This is called PV array. All three of these is called a string. This is in the groove. It's a software system. We're going to look at it a little bit more later. This is an on grid grid tie system with a lot of PV on the roof in Germany. And these things over here are called uh, grid tie inverters. Here's a wind turbine in my garden, sky likes it. Here's a Tesla Model S, uh, sorry, Tesla Roadster car with the um, wind turbines in the background. And uh, Elon Musk, who's from Pretoria, started PayPal. Uh, he decided a lot of money people decided they were going to make cheap cars, but then you had to spend a lot of money making cheap cars. He also needed a lot of money to make an expensive car, but he needed to get people 
you could afford to buy these expensive cars to buy them. And it was a very clever tactic because you got people to buy in advance, to pay for cars two or three years in advance, just like people pay for buildings in advance, they borrow a plan, building gets built, and then you and so on. And uh, some people bought the cars you know, on spec and then sold them. There was a, quite a lot of trading going on because he actually needed more money and so on. Then there's a Tesla Model S, which is the sedan, and here is the jewel. So that is an electric car, I think five were made, and then a project was scrapped. So we're going to talk about load shedding. I'm going to try and place this away. Um, planning, another project is why we're in the mess we get. The duplex procedure, the two big coal power stations. Um, and then uh, the very big numbers, what exactly is uh, 125 billion, what is 2.3 trillion, uh, some jargon busting, specialized language, what does it mean, what's an inverter, what's a good time inverter, what's a PV panel, there's a PV panel over there, a small example of one, um, what do you need to know to buy a system, and then I'm going to talk about are we off grid, are we on grid, community power stations, microgrids, energy, water, food, and life. I think the thing to do is that a lot of people say, I want to be off grid, I don't want to use SCOM. But I think that the thing to do is try and look at how we can actually supplement ESCOM's generation in the national grid in order to make South Africa better, not just ourselves better. So what happens? The government produces white papers, and um, the white paper on renewable energy came out in 2003. There was a white paper on energy entirely in 1998, and that said that 30% of the grid would be in private hands by 2010. Uh, and I don't think the government's noticed that in past 2010, uh, but we have actually. Um, ah, thank you. This is a really old one. I'm actually quite surprised that it all works. Thanks for the new one. Okay, good. So we built power stations, and there was demand, and sometimes we had more, and sometimes we had less. But what happened in the, in the 1980s is we had spare capacity. Okay. So whilst we had all the spare capacity, ESCOM ran around to SAB, and they said to SAB. What is it costing you to run your coal-fired boiler? And they said it's costing us next. They worked out the way for an hour. And they said, well, we'll supply electricity and you can do it at a cost of that cost. Which was easy to do because if you've got spare capacity, the cost of setting your spare capacity is zero. Because you've really sold it, made all the money, all of this, whatever you make is profit. Unfortunately, they sold it kind of on a forever basis. They should have just sold it for 20 years. Okay? So then what happened is the bidders and the political capital said, wow, you can get all this cheap electricity, let's uh, get on the grid, and that's why these people. The other thing is when you build a power station, okay, you're going to spend 100 million on a power station, you need someone to put an off-taker. And the off-taker then makes the power station your work. So the off-taker says, I'll buy 20% of your power. And in other words, it's I'll buy 20% and then you get to your fault. And they actually buy 80% of the electricity. And then the rest is there for us. But the power station is not built for us. Power stations bought for these really big off-takers and they make the project viable because they sign an agreement to buy the electricity for the year. Okay? But this warned in 2003 that we're going to run out of electricity in 2008 and we had load shedding in 2008, exactly as predicted. Okay? Which will based on any power station that came on screen in the last 20 years, okay? And it started to build and the starting project was before 1994. So this is a the government's own white paper, the government's own information, and they said you're running out of it. So this is coal mine. This is an example of a coal mine, a closer view of it. It's called mountaintop removal. It happens all over the world. It's very unfortunate. But in the past, we had to do this in the comments that made our economy work. The question is, do we need to still do it, or can we use these? Okay? This is an example of a wind farm in the water, in the North Sea, off Denmark, the offshore wind farm. And we can generate three times as much electricity as we need worldwide right now with offshore wind farms that are close to shore. So if we just build wind farms, we can supply three times as much electricity as we need. So coal mining from the air, the Center of Environmental Rights is very nice to send me some email this week. And here is strip coal mining. There's an extra power station, and here's smart. And if we get a bit closer than that, we find something called an ash dam over here. Because what happens is the ESCOM supply, or sorry, the government. Supply one of our best thermal coal. Thermal coal is coal that you burn in power stations. They supply our best thermal coal to many countries around the world. And that expansion is happening uh, constantly because we can't actually build power stations to use the coal ourselves. Um, and uh, then we use crap, sorry, we use not nice um, <laughs> power coal in our power stations. 
Peter where you understand that we are quite honest with, especially for international people and children. Uh, so you know, I look at the audience and I see all these adults and then I remember I be careful there's you know many other people watching. Okay. Uh, so this is called an ash dam, and because we're burning coal for its current in our power stations, there are a lot of maintenance problems. And um, so as you can see, we have a bad, if you put bad oil in your car, your cars are going to run for long. We put bad coal into our power stations. We do all kinds of things to, to try and make it better, powerize it, you know, crush it, all kinds of stuff, and then it will be a big ash dam. Although it says copyright my power station, this is just there because I want you to, if you use my stuff, please just refer to me, say David said this, or using the site on David's presentation. So we heard that wind farms were the landscape. Okay? And then we see this. There's the wind farm. Okay, I'm not sure how bad it's really in this particular landscape, which I think is an iron ore mine, but some kind of mine with these big tractors and so on taking stuff off the ground. And we need it because we have cell phones and computers and cars. Maybe we don't need it. But that's another topic of another discussion. So we had a crisis management. What we did is, because we had all this excess state capacity, we marked all old power stations. So in 1990, 1985, in the late 80s, early 90s, we marked all these power stations. Okay, and uh, so on. And then what we did is, when we suddenly realized in 2008 we had a problem, then we said, okay, let's unmark all the power stations. And it was meant to be that we could bring these power stations on stream very quickly, but they discovered that unmarked all the old multiple power stations, things that have been run for 20 years, suddenly you can't just switch on them. You know, try and start your car if you haven't run it for 20 years. When you go on holiday, you come back a month later, your car doesn't stop. You make it to your power station. Okay, so Majuba, uh, which is somewhere here, okay, uses 50,000 tons of coal a day, needs a truck of coal every 15 seconds. When they built Majuba, they built it, coal power stations are built at coal mines. When they built Majuba, okay, then they discovered that the coal, they couldn't mine it, so they truck the coal in. And we've actually been there more for like a couple years ago. It's not, not a nice road or a nice place. Then in 2008, the government finally gave permission for these nuclear power stations that you can see that, and they were going to start producing power in 2012. And this is because the government's series from July to June. Okay? So all that was meant to come on stream there. 30 in the year, six months later, six months after that, six months after that, six months after that. Everything should be running by this year, but nothing's running. So we're a little bit behind. Okay? And uh, you see there, should have been on screen. First bit of it, and it should all be running by 2017. None of it is running. And not only are we not banging on these things every six months, we're also being told they're going to take at least a year to bring on screen. And there's reasons for this. They're, they're building power stations which have never been built before, at scales which have never been built before, because this is the custom at ESCOM. So whilst the government blames the party for the power crisis we're in, okay, the thing to really blame is ESCOM's culture, which says we will build the biggest and best, and who cares what it costs? Which is okay. In the old days, but it's not working anymore. Okay? Um, and this is kind of story, which is a kind of battery. So, assuming we did the slide in 2010, I took it out of another presentation, it's black background, but uh, this assumes that SCOM had people that they said they were going to go. Okay? And this over here shows 2% growth in electricity plant, okay? 2% growth in requirement. And you can see that there was that uh, dearth. I'm not sure why we've got a shadow, but it shouldn't be a shadow. But the, 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 there was a lack of electricity, and we had load shedding. Okay? And as we started building, and by now, 2015, we shouldn't have load shedding anymore. In fact, we shouldn't have load shedding until 2020. And then, of course, there should be other power stations coming on stream here. Yeah, we have load shedding. And then we look at 3% and 4%. Now, worldwide, electricity is growing at 4% now. South so Africa electricity is actually growing faster than that, because if you take a poor person and you give them a washing machine, and a dishwasher, and a blow dryer, and a fridge, okay, and a TV, and a geezer, and all these things they never had before. They need a lot of electricity. So, you know, how do you give them electricity without building your power stations? Well, you close your economy. Okay, so you switch off your textile industry, for example. So that's just a way of looking at things from an electricity point of view. Might not be real, might be already happen, but I don't think the electricity, uh, I don't think that the textile company is just closed because of all the in the meantime, the government say to us that the world economy is shrinking and we've got a problem. Okay, but yeah, this is a lot of From 1950 till now, 2010, we've got a lot of So, this is, yeah, we still grow fast. Okay? In fact, South Africa's GDP in dollars is more now than it was back then. Okay? And, uh, 
right? So between South Africa is growing not very fast, but all of this demands energy and electricity to grow very fast. Okay? Wind has grown extremely fast. Okay? And you can see until 2005, we will install 50,000 megawatts, 50 gigawatts of energy. Okay? So it took how many years? 50 years. They got 1,000 years or millions of millions of years of life. And then it took another five years to four times as much as that. Part of the reason is because of much decreasing electricity costs, wind turbine costs, and the other part of the equation is much decreasing in your uh, coal and fossil fuels and solar costs. This is EV, but what they cannot you see installations exponentially increasing. This is cumulative solar PV installations. You see 2010, they're 40 gigawatts. Okay, so in, in, in 1960, it cost 600 grand for one of these things in the four years. Okay, 66,000 plus 600 grand, sorry, 60 dollars plus about 600 grand in today's money uh, to buy one watt of photovoltaic panels. Today it costs 50 million cents. Okay, so it costs five grand. Okay, so the prices have plummeted, and then because the prices have plummeted and other costs are going up, it made sense to install, and then, for example, in two years, we installed 80. It took us thousands of years to get here, and it took two years. Okay. That's exponential growth. Okay. In the 19, in the 2000s, the solar PV market was 35% annual, the coal market was 4% annual, the wind market was 27% annual. This is compound annual growth. If you run a business, you know that your market is growing 35% annual, that's the place to be. Okay. Not over there. Now people say, but we saw wind turbines, the wind doesn't blow. Okay. Well, the wind actually does blow. And then we can tell accurately at 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon how much wind we're going to get from a particular wind farm. Okay? But we can't tell accurately if a coal power station or nuclear power station were running at 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. We can't. We can say, for the more averages, it should be running blah, 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 as long as both are according to turbines and all this kind of stuff. Okay? We're okay, but we can't actually. And this is China. This is Chinese wind farm output, and this is Chinese nuclear output. So although they're building nuclear, they're also building wind. And for the last two years, they've had more wind electricity than nuclear electricity. The wind blows somewhere. So you might have put a wind farm here and a wind farm there and a wind farm somewhere else, but for the amount of money that you need to spend on Kubu, you can build three times as much wind farms and definitely somewhere on the place the wind's blowing. And if you tell your customers, when the wind's blowing, you can have electricity for 50 cents a kilowatt hour, and when the wind's not blowing, you can have electricity for 500 kilowatt hour, and people will do things that they need to do at 50 cents a kilowatt hour. That's called time on these tariffs. Yes, yeah, so I've a wind farm, where my point is from. Okay, some over here. So they agree. Okay, have a little dot. Somehow I managed to change it, make it, I hold it, just take it, just twist it. It's a, 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 it's a living, living man. Maybe you're a face, yeah. Okay, I just switched the light off. Yeah, whatever. Uh, and, uh, so, uh, do you know how to tell if there's a hypochondriac in the room, by the way? Everybody ever sees? Okay, you switch off the lights, and then everybody shouts the lights, the lights, except the hypochondriac. It says, my eyes, my eyes. <laughs> so, it's amazing what control you have when you switch the lights on. This is, I've got a, I've got a video, which you know just now, from the open wind farm. The maintenance man will fix that. Okay, and then just in case you don't know where Oakfield is, it's working. Back to Pan Hang. Okay. okay, cool. And we've got a bigger green dot. Here's the Oakwood Wind Farm, East of Sardana. Here's the Friedenberg Wind Farm over there. And here's the Canada Wind Farm. These are the three big wind farms we've got in Western Canada so far, with others being built. So, what's our future? Mm -hmm. Is it coal? The GP can see that coal free, which is the next one of this stuff. Is it gas? I'm going to move here and close the I'm not sure which is relatively clean. Are we going to frack the Peru? This is one frack pad. Which is where you get the fact gas from. Fracking hydraulic fracturing. I've got a whole talk on that. Uh, oil, nuclear, hydroelectric, renewable. This is renewable energy. You know, people talk about renewable energy as being alternative energy. But actually, renewable energy is original energy. Coal and gas and nuclear is alternative energy. We've been having renewable energy for thousands of years. You know, we, we built a yacht, we sell the yacht thousands of years ago, even hundreds of years ago. We um, had rivers, and we used to take a bar and cut the river, and we used to wash power, horses, putting the barge back up the river. We did all that kind of stuff, all the new energies. 
So where's the Duke? You see there? Well, the Duke is there. You see there's about there somewhere. But put timber power stations next to the Duke, that's Cape Town. What happened is because we all of this electricity from here to Cape Town. So 40 or 50 years ago, the government said, we need to build a nuclear power station here because there's no electricity here. But today, renewable energy prices are down, and there's a huge wind farm, sorry, huge solar farm to be built in the sun belt over here. We built a little uh, solar farm over here for a client, and he's getting about 50 to 60 percent more output than he was expecting. He actually doesn't cook with gas anymore because there's so much solar power. Okay, so here we have the R, the R is there, and the R is the main switching station for electricity in South Africa, and this is a solar farm in the R. It's very good. I drove at 60 kilometers an hour past one of them, and I filmed, and it took us four minutes, so it's four kilometers long. They put a mass. Okay, cool. If I say, if I get it wrong, please say it wrong, and that doesn't Okay, so here's back to the timber, there's the timber, here's the duty. There's the hook for the coal mine. There's a conveyor belt going here, taking coal here. There's another conveyor belt going here. And then there's big power lines going to Jordan and so on. And uh, so that's what it looks like. This is the duty from a close up, almost five gigawatts power station. Here's a coal supply going in here. And if you know what happened in Madruba, one of them had two of these one for this side of the power station, one for that side of the power station, and uh, one for that, and they lost half the power station. Now, if you know that, you've got to spend an extra few million rand building six conveyor belts. If yeah, there's one breaks, it's got five, it's got five, six, three power stations running. Yeah, if you one breaks, you lose all the power station. And if all the power station goes down, you lose the whole power station because there's such a big surge on the grid that the whole thing goes out of action until it takes a week to restart the work before actually the ground wants to run. Here's the timber running four gigawatts, using 2,150 tons of coal per hour. Okay, and the energy will use more than that. So we're in trouble, no new base of power stations, trying to add one gigawatt a week. Okay, so they could try and add 18 gigawatts of windows and then put the gigawatts as we talk about by some old numbers. Okay, so we're going, we're building 10 gigawatts, electricity is already sold. You know it's sold because very lonely, right? Somebody wants to buy it. Okay, and we're going to decommission 10 gigawatts at the 2020 section, we're going to end up with more. Okay, so here's uh, we're building a new technology, it's very high pressure, which means very high temperature, okay, 600 degrees instead of 300 degrees. So we know the right power station is 300 degrees. This box says they can do 600 degrees. I can spend about 20 minutes on the slide, but only about 30 seconds. So uh, the thing is that they're building new technology. And the reason that they're doing it is because they use less coal. And South Africa is the world's fifth biggest coal exporter. So we don't have a shortage of coal. Yes, we send one of our coal to other countries, which means we don't tell you. But we don't need to tell Okay? Talking about that already, 16,000 people to build these two power stations, 8,000 each acres to build, about 2 million people to build. Okay. So these 16,000 people are spiked off the time of holding these other 2 million people to ransom. Why do these 2 million people go to their Falana and tell these people to work? <laughs> okay. 60% of the budget, 125 billion instead of 79 billion. So alternatives. We build something, we top it, it's going to cost you 50,000, 20,000, 100,000, whatever it's going to cost you. It's going to take a week to build. It's actually quite two days, we usually finish jobs in one day. So we take so like two days and start next Monday by Wednesday you can have your own electricity. Okay, we can discuss what that means. Okay, and um, the so you're gonna have your own electricity and you're gonna have it in two days. Okay. If you're gonna if, if it takes two days you over time. If it's costing you thirty thousand instead of twenty thousand, you've got a budget to do about it. You know about it within a week. You build this chat, the previous chat, you know, the Majuki thing, and you take eight years and then you build it. It's gonna be that. We spent 80 million, we're already a billion on the budget. We're having low trading because new build is very late, but you can see that very late. Okay? Unmarked building is happening much slower than we thought it would take. Land maintenance is left. Now, we could say, we could blame the government for this, but the government decided in 1994 to 2005, which is when they really started thinking about electricity, that they would use all the income from these places to fund poverty. Okay? And it was a good idea for a medium term. In electricity, the long term is 50 years, the short term is 5 years, and the medium term is 20 years. This is the electricity industry. Okay? In the computer industry, you know, I, I run a computer business, okay? which pays for me to come and talk to people, which is great and good, good for everybody. But the thing is, I can go see someone on Monday, the following Monday I can start the work, and the following Monday is finished. Depending on the kind of project, it might take 6 months. But every year, you've done the whole project. The long term in the computer industry is 2 years. 
we need to remind you of the short term as a week. Things are changing so fast. It's a different kind of industry, it's a different kind of time frame. Okay. So we do we, 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 our plan maintenance is that because we waited too long, we gave too much money to poverty for too long, and then we didn't say, okay, I'm going to stop that, because we should have brought people out of poverty, we should have enough, have enough electricity to run that, and then have our plan maintenance. The benefits of that is focus on quality, the one response is we have to ask pace people to switch off, so they said to people, come on board, we'll give you one second notice to switch off, we'll give you 10 minutes notice to switch off, or half an hour notice, and you can switch off different amounts for different periods of time, and then you pay to do that. Load shedding is a kind of one response, except load shedding you don't get paid to switch off. Okay? Then they use pump storage, for example, skim dust dam, and they pump water up when it's costing nothing, two o'clock in the morning, or your wind farm is generating too much power, you don't know what to do with it, you pump water up. It makes sense. For the big battery, you need a peaking power station, and the peaking power station uses diesel, and um, the one in Hunter Lowe's name now says 25,000 liters of diesel a minute. 25,000 liters of diesel a minute. Work on how much your car uses a minute, and then it's how much waste that is. So we need to look at the big numbers. So we're right here. Okay. So we need 125 billion. That's a billion. That's a billion. That's 125. Okay. So I, I said to my accountant, "What's 125 billion?" She says, "I don't know." Okay. Now she's got a lot of education about big numbers. She says, "I know what a billion is because I've got a customer who's a billion rand turnover company." I said, "Okay, cool. Well, you know." It's a 12 and a half million, 10,000 in solar water heat. So this means that 12 and a half million houses in South Africa, every house could be good at solar water heat. And then if we do that, 12 and a half thousand easily means 20 gigawatts of electricity, but the Duke is only going to make five. So if we make electricity from the sun, we get four times as much electricity per and we can heat water and we can cool water. If you make the temperature differential high enough, you can actually use hot water to cool. The really big numbers 2.3 trillion, 2.3 million million. 2.3 billion, you know, 2.3 thousand billion, big number. Okay? This is the type of estimated investments in electricity over the next 20 to 30 years that we need to keep ourselves going. Okay? And here's 125 billion, and here's 250 million for Canada. I mean, who, which president in history didn't have a big house? You know, I mean, look at, look at the palace in London. You know, that's at least 250 million pounds. You know, we should be lucky to die. What about this? We diverted. Our attention is here. I'm obviously expecting to see those working. Okay, so let's try my work. Okay, maybe the first red dots are not green dots, I don't know. It's a fire, you see, suppliers are red. I mean, we're a, we're a nation, we're a world of um, pyromaniacs. We just we burn all this coal and nuclear power making these big fires. We got that big fire eight minutes, eight solar light minutes away from the sun. Okay, and that may be for help. So how do we pay back this triple future? We have to borrow it. So we're going to have to spend $23 billion a month on the accounts. So guess what? There's 3.5 million taxpayers. My wife and I will talk about 13,000 rand a month okay, to build all this stuff. And we won't even get it. That's just the capital cost. Let's, let's think about this. What else can we do with one billion? Well, we can put, take 5,000 houses and we can make them as power stations. These are middle class houses using 1,200 kilowatt hours per month. You know, the average shack is using 200 to 300 kilowatt hours a month. Our house is using 200 to 300 kilowatt hours a month. Maybe we live in a shack. We don't. We make our electricity. Okay? So, 5,000 plant meters, 5,000 inverters, 40,000 batteries, 5,000 solar panels, 150,000 solar panels, 150,000 solar And all these people, manufacturers, designers, support people, call centers, thousands of people involved in the supply chain. With one billion, we've already spent 250 billion on these two power stations. They're not finished yet. Multiply that by 5,000. And this is assuming that they don't work together. Community power stations say we should work together. Because then we can bring the convention. If you walked into Samsung and you said, hi, right, we'd like to buy 5,000 Samsung smart energy efficient fridges, please. That's a wow, you can have a 50% discount. Okay? You can buy 5,000 solar movies. You put another 10 South African suppliers into business. But you're going to not buy that one in a week. So 5,000 houses is what I call my gelatin. I live in Bonneton, somewhere over here. My house is there. Okay. So this area over here is 5,000 houses. The billion rand, this is a power station, doesn't need an electricity ground. Yes, it should be supplying the grid, it should be getting electricity from the grid. We should have a big wind turbine over here, 2 megawatts, because of power electricity. 
So we have this, this is again from the Integrated Resource Plan 2018 version 8, and it says, this is risk, low risk, high risk. Blue theory, what's it going to cost? We have no idea. Okay, lead time substance, we have no idea what it's going to take a build. Supply, well, we, we know we can get uranium from uh, Namibia, as long as they don't have a coup or something. Okay, and operating, well, we don't know what it's going to cost. So we're getting a 10 out of 12. When? Well, we've got some idea what it's going to cost. We know exactly how long it's going to take to build. A week to three weeks. Good luck. Well, the wind blows, right? Maybe not all the time, but you can get a wipe. Okay, same security supply as nuclear. Okay, and operating risk is not two out of four. So what should we do? Wind or nuclear? Here's coal. Here's an open cycle gas turbine, which is not a gas turbine; it's a diesel turbine. Okay, and so on. So that's, this is the government's document. Is it cheap or reliable? But what happened? Okay, this is where we are. So we have, um, in the 1980s, the German people realized, some leaders and some German people realized that the electricity costs would be too high for their manufacturing environment and manufacturing country by 2010 to 2020. So they started the program for 20% of renewable energy by 2020, it was called 20 by 2020. Okay? And what they did is they created something called feed-in tariff. At the time, it was costing, okay, it was 10 cents if it was something on the wall down here. Okay, to buy it is 10 cents per hour for the certificate, and the yeah, it was costing 4 rand per hour to make easy PV. But the German government said, we'll pay 4 rand per hour, 20 years. Okay. So some of those projects, 1991, well, that's finished, but if they start the project to 2000, then it might be 6 rand per hour, they're still paying it. Okay, which is fine, because what they did is they helped to bring the price down. And in 2008, with my wife and I installed our system, it cost us 556 kilowatt hour, okay, and now, and at the time, it was costing 57 cents. Okay. So we decided to pay five rand per hour more, but we decided not to use as much coal as we We didn't go off the work, we couldn't afford to do it. But we made sure that load shedding would not affect us. So if, if there's load shedding, the lights can not working, the computers can not working, the TV can not working, we still use the cable, we can still open the garage doors, you know, and then the price came down, zooming down to year 2012. Whilst this price zoomed up to 150% and we cost that point. Now this made, there's all kinds of assumptions in the numbers. So at the moment in 2015, it's about 1.50 for a small home and working by himself. This assumes 8 kilowatt systems and it assumes 100 kilowatts of minimum water. Okay. So if you work together, you do 8 houses at a time, you can get a better price. You just have to go speak to your neighbors. Hey, neighbors. We'd like to buy 80 inverters. Cool. Okay. But now it's cost 1.96. Okay. Sorry, it costs 1.96 for kilowatt hour average for 12 kilowatt hour house. Come to a should arrive at time. Assuming you're 50 percent increase, you're going to be 25% increase this hour over here. If it's over there, it'd be wonderful. Not for us, but wonderful for renewable energy because then we're going to be good for our batteries. We won't need ESCOM. So ESCOM's already really careful of putting up a price tag because we're going to say, sorry guys, we don't need it. Okay. So that'd be quite exciting. I'm expecting us to cross that point with batteries in 2017. We might get here before Okay, Which is good and bad for the economy. We're going to look at that. Okay. This over here is how it works in real time on the how that cross works. Again, the RFP says, this penetration of distributed generation may occur with or without the support and approval of national and local government entities. There are thousands of people installed in the system. There are thousands of people illegally feeding the work. Okay? And this is in the RFP. And this is what the government projects that there's 2.5 gigawatts and it's going to come to 30 gigawatts by 2050. I think we're going to get there by 2030. I think we're going to get here in South Africa by 2025 to 2030 because of lack of electricity. This is the government's goal. The government says, hey, yeah, the cost is too high, people are starting in the system. But they're not doing anything with it. Yes. I remember taking it off and said, oh, this office is going to be ready. I'm not sure that they actually read it. It's up on top of it. It's available on the internet. I don't know, Jacob, this is reading for you. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm not sure why it's taking so long to read a document about his building. Yeah. You, know, you should know what the content is. Okay? So what do we need it for? We need to do everything. Even if we've got high tech, we need to do it. Because we've got our cell phones on, we're getting SMSs, we, maybe we turn our cell phone off and if we want to call someone in an emergency, we call them on the cell phone, we used to carry a little bit of talkies with us. You know, we use GPS. We had, we had battery cars before. We had battery cars before. We had petrol cars. So we use it for everything. We don't have it. We've got water. Water's stuck. We've got banking. We've got nice things. We've got petrol. Petrol stuff. And it's been good. Manly. How long is it lost? We have no transport because that's been on petrol, which depends on refineries, but refineries have electricity. So we're going to get from place. They can burn oil to make electricity in the refineries. It's not very efficient. Petrol price will be four times as high as it is now. Okay, food depends on all this. 
right? Four days of food in the supply chain, just in time system. We need to do the supply how we get it. Okay, normally we buy electricity, now we can produce it, we can use it ourselves, we can sell it, we can sell it to our customers. We should force the government to put these labels on everything. It's up to us. So we have a requirement in the European Union. It says that for this washing machine, it uses 1.75 kilowatt hours of cycle and some other performance information. This is a meter block. This is our house in 2010. We're running out of time. Yeah, not just. And uh, the roof is being cut on every 16 kilowatt hours a day. Tuesday, we call it our house. Let's take a look at the bottom. So they're doing the whole lot And now, after putting in a new fridge and a new pool pump, any efficient uh, solar water heater, we are averaging. We're well, maximum eight. So we're, we're, we're using half from the group. Solar panels, there's in America, these are different kinds of solar panels. I'm not going to get to now, there's rooftop solar, and this is solar panels we use for shading, and there's your example here. This is a roof in Cape Town. Solar PV made the electricity from the sun, solar water heating, heating water. This is in Cape Bay, three kilowatt rooftop system, not a flat roof. This is a roof in Jobu. Quite a big TV system on this roof of this building. And one of the requirements that the European is doing is they're saying to people, well, we want you to be energy efficient or we want you to be green. So now companies, <laughs> not only are doing this because they're saving money, but they're doing this because they want customers. Very important to have customers. This is a close up. This is the good time builders. They're all in parallel. We run them on the parallel and we can export all those. Interesting. The good they're doing there is they're just reducing the consumption and how much they're exporting. This is their system in the Karoo. This is us in selection team. Our brother did the filming. They had one inverter to start with. Now they've got three inverters. They've got this battery back. They've upgraded it three times and recently got the big battery back. They actually moved those other makers elsewhere. And they did that when they discovered how much electricity they could actually make from the sun. When we did the system in the crew originally, the guy said, I've spent 150000 on ESPA. This was 2010. So we came from my town, my to this side of my farm, and my house here. So I said, I'm not going to spend 150000 rand with you okay, for lights and computers and my uh, satellite communications and all those kinds of things. Um, and uh, we said, OK, but we think you can run your microwave as well. And he said, well, that's great. And um, so we put the system in by 150000 and it gave it five apps. It was not as much as a SQL 15 and flat, but it was enough to run his house. And then he discovered that because the sun was making so much electricity for him, he could run his microwave convection oven. Because he could run his microwave convection oven, he doesn't need gas. Okay? So he did anything. He went within six months. He had upgraded his inverter, upgraded his battery makes it oh, could do all of the stuff on the sun. He, just, he didn't understand. This is the problem we don't understand. So we need to do science, practice. Ask my work around. This is our garage, it's a scientific experiment. This is our battery bank. It's not the first one, it's the second battery bank. Okay? First battery bank was cheap battery bank and fine. You talk about why. So this is an MPPT controller. It takes electricity from the sun, puts it in the battery bank, charges it, it's got a maximum power contractor, all interesting stuff. You can see this really thick cable. We need a 65 millimeter cross section cable. This is a 12 millimeter or 8 millimeter cable. So you need this cable to put it into the battery at low apps. You need this one to take the, the 24 volt battery bank and make 20 volts for the signal. You need to have a big, thick cable. Okay. And then this inverter inverts from DC to AC, goes into the house, okay. and it's also a charger, so we can use SCOM electricity to charge it. SCOM is not there because it's a generator to charge it, or we can also do grid tire if SCOM wants to buy electricity from us, we can start up with the electricity. What we do is we just run it during the day, and then mode the full pumps on, and essentially we power in a lot of our battery drivers, which is in this little DD board over here, and then our main DD board is inside the house, and um, then what happens is that. Uh, we basically power up using the excess power to run our, our, our pool pump. And if there's load shedding, our pool pump switches off, but everything else goes on. Obviously, we don't cook yet. But we're hoping to be at the point with doubling the battery bank size, putting another inverter, putting, increasing the PV on the roof, and then we think we can cook with this system, with electric cooking. This is a Victron system. This is a, a, a Victron and good time inverter. This is a battery inverter, and that's an MPPT controller. You can actually buy all of, that, all of this equipment just on this thing. You can actually buy it with one module to go. And as the computers, this is all computers. The reason I buy some down all the time is this computers. Circuit boards and stuff inside of it. Yeah, you can see it there. You just have to plug the wires in the right place, do the programming in the right way, and uh, off you go. So 
prices can be down all the time because the renewal energy industry is based on the computer industry. You need to wear two bits. Heating reduction for a second day in winter. So I want to know system with 600 watts. You can see the graph going like that during the day, which is exactly what we expect. During a cloudy day, it still does the same kind of graph, but it's going to be 50 watts. Now, Eskom says, and the city well, our peak demand is here and here. Okay. That's what it is. But we can do things. At this time at midnight, electricity is really cheap. Okay. At this time, I'm making money electricity. So what happens if Eskom said, well, at 5 o'clock in the afternoon, when it's peak time, we'll charge you 5 a.m. for an hour, and at this time, we'll charge you 1 a.m. for an hour, and here we'll charge you 50 cents. Well, then you can say, hey, look, I'm going to do a little project into my oven. I'm going to put my chicken in, and I'm going to press the button at 2 o'clock in the morning, my chicken's going to be cooked. And it's going to cost me, it's going to cost me 25 cents to cook it instead of 3 o'clock. Okay? So you still can cook your chicken, just at another time of the day. And if the wind chair was all pumping, it is a thing. What happens is the electricity prices become negative. They actually pay you to take that electricity. Because it's just so much And then you can actually make it for free. <laughs> if you're vegetarian, you can make a vegetarian dish. Okay? It's good for free. So, you have a PV around the roof, you have a good time burner, this is a combined box that puts all the rays together, with the Amazon box and so on, you have a DP board, you have a utility, you just take this stuff from the sun, you send it to the electricity, you reduce the load, and you make the PV stuff. So this is a system with a you go to charge a battery, PV array, has to go to the solar charge control and battery bank. You have an inverter, which can send electricity to the utility, if it's an island inverter. So, what happens is when there's, when there's load shedding, the people's generators will notice a reason. When there's load shedding, you can't just turn on your generator. Because what happens when the load shedding starts? Okay? You also can't send the electricity to the grid during load shedding. Okay? Because there might be load shedding because someone's working in the street. And okay? all of a sudden you put 600 volts or whatever it is on the street, and the guy gets a shot. Because he turned the switch off and then he went and touched the cables without checking that they're off. Because he's meant to switch the switch off and then check that the cables off. But quite often they don't do that. Okay? Hmm? Yeah. No, exactly. <laughs> you're spinning the cable. Yeah. So basically you do that and then what happens is you back up TV board for the things you want to run during the ocean. And this is, this is our system at our house. And then there's also other stuff going on. So you have a good time, but what they kind of invert, you have a battery and a good charger. This is the kind of system um my Gary is installing in very, very big houses and in flats that don't have access to the sun, he's putting in inverters and batteries, just those kind of systems. Okay, so that lights and TVs and kettles and uh, computers and electricity are running. You can have combinations of it, you can have a TV panel, maybe see show they go to charge over me. Then you can have both and you've got that system. That's gonna be community cost. This is about saving money. So let's get some money. Probably a kilowatt hour house, one hundred ninety five kilowatt hours, thirty two thousand three hundred forty one months. That's eight kilowatt hour sorry, twelve hundred kilowatt hour house is an eight kilowatt TV system, assuming net meter, we buy and sell at the same price. Okay, this number, there's five sun hours in Cape Town, so eight times five is forty kilowatt hours a day, times fifty does twelve hundred kilowatt hours a day. <laughs> what happens is during the day, we make ten kilowatt hours, we make forty kilowatt hours in the day, okay, we use ten. We export it to the grid, our meter is at minus 50, we come and we use the electricity, the next morning we start at zero again. Okay? That's obviously an ideal world, what happens in some ways we make more electricity than negative, in winter we use more electricity than positive, at the end of the year we zero. And there's all kinds of opportunities, but the syndicate is charging, giving you less money for supplying the grid. But it's my idea. Okay, I said then, why not get the system going and pay us 57 cents, because that's what you pay ESCOM, and let us buy from your own 50. Yeah, but then they did something really stupid, they added in a service fee. So now it's more expensive. I mean, I'm spending 30 grand a month on my bill. If I want to go and do this, I want to pay 30 grand a month just my service fee. So what's the point? You know? So that's a problem. Okay? The reason I said, why did they buy it for most of 57 cents? Is because over time, that 57 cents goes up. Okay? You don't put the whole system in the first year. So the one cost is going down, the other cost is going up. It's your cost, and you've got the system right up around. Anyway. So, if we want to back up some loads, let's suppose you want to back up power loads. We want to back up two laptops, our network, our TV, and our fridge, okay? And then we want to run it two and a half hours in load shedding again. So, how much do we need? We need 500 times two and a half, which is a one, two, five, or watt hours. We have to multiply by two because, and then as the battery, you can recycle to 50%, and then take 50% the out of it. But I do design, so I try to get people to buy bigger than that. So I don't want to cycle it to 50%. 50% on a regular basis, 50% on a regular basis. Okay. So, 
We then expect the voltage, which is like two and a half thousand watt hours, two point five kilowatt hours, so twelve volts is a two hundred amp hour battery. Okay, or we can buy one of four amp hour batteries between four volts, or we can buy fifty two amp hour forty eight volts. So assuming we buy one of five amp hour batteries, we put two into series, and we get two hundred ten amp hours between four volts, which gives us five kilowatt hours, for which two and a half is usable. Everybody happy with that? Sort of. Google Docs or Excel. Okay. Yeah. 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 I don't believe that any 500 mm batteries are properly used for batteries. They're, they're very widely used. Okay. People can buy them if they want to. Okay. Uh, but the performance of this battery is so much better than the other battery. So when you look at the curve of the battery usage, the voltage you'll see. Okay. So we, each one of these weighs 85 kilos, so they've got these ropes that you pick two people to put them up. Okay. There's two of them in series, so 12 times 2 is 24. The 24 volt system is 24 volt inverter. And then two of them in parallel. And the reason we put in the crowd was to get more electricity. Okay, and if we put another bank here, we get more electricity for longer. Okay, and also we add another 3 kilowatt of which we get 6 kilowatts, which means we can cook. At the moment, we're going to upgrade the PV system, okay, and then the folks will take this on our roof, and we'll go into everything except electrical cooking in the house. So this is my the design. Four Sonics 260 amp hour batteries at 12 volts each. 10 series gets 24 volts. 2 parallel is 520 amp hours. 520 to 24 is 12 kilowatt hours. And you've heard about the Tesla Power Wall, which gives you 7 kilowatt hours. At the moment, the Tesla Power Wall is twice the price of their asset over a five year time period. If the Tesla battery lasts 10 years, like they say it will, then it will be the same price. And if the Tesla battery lasts 15 years, as some people think it will, then it will be less. But we don't know how long it's going to last. It doesn't exist yet. Okay? We see something, you know. It's, it's relatively easy to make something in a laboratory. It's much more painful to make it on a production line. Right now, Tesla can make the batteries in a laboratory. They work. Okay? They're busy building the production lines. Okay? And because Elon Musk has got a, a good reputation and so on over many years, okay, you can do 18 months of sales before the factory is even built. Okay, we use up to, we use two kilowatt hours in an average two and a half hour load shedding event, but assuming the sun shining, we work every one hour of electricity with our existing system. Of course, we work better for the world. We can heat our water with our solar power, but the reason we need to use electric power as well as supplements or heat pump come from the event. <coughs> There's two different kinds of batteries, main batteries, dead acid. We need twice as much or three times as much of the requirement. So if you need five kilowatt hours, you need a 10 kilowatt hour battery, okay? and it takes five hours to charge. Okay? Lithium ion. I made the second issue of writing I R O M. That's not leaf. Someone told me it's not I O. It's I R. Okay. So there you go. Just for that. Okay. Um, and so you only need twenty percent more. So if you need five kilowatt hours, you buy a six kilowatt hour battery. So the seven kilowatt hour Tesla battery will do what my ten kilowatt hour the my battery will do. Okay. In fact, more my twelve kilowatt hour battery. Okay? It only takes one hour to charge, which is nice because the PV prices are really cheap. You can fill up the roof with PV, and then that, you've got that two hours of sales of sun and summer for winter, you can charge your batteries quickly. Okay? For the supercharger, with a three phase supercharger, which uses a lot of electricity, you can charge it in half an hour. And right now in America, with a Tesla car, one thing about buying a Tesla car is it's expensive, but you get free battery. It's actually electricity. Okay? But you get free. It doesn't cost anything to drive a car. In America, you can drive West Coast, East Coast, up, down. The driver will spoil over the whole of North America for free by two of these cars. Better performance of their asset than the price. And then you have pump storage as a battery. So, good time about batteries, less than 100 kilowatts, 23 and a watt, if you need that. More than 100 kilowatts, 20 and a watt. Um, and down to about 16 and 50, depending on the size, next to that. For a good size system with no batteries. If you add batteries, you need an inverter charge, you may need an iron inverter, you may need a system to prevent back heat. Into a generator or into the grid, you have a generator. Okay, now, this is talking about a question about generators. You know, so, okay? so, what happens is you build a system. Okay? Now, my wife and I had a party a few days ago. Okay, we, had, we had nine people, we had seven people at supper. 
Okay? And that particular day we use 25 kilowatt hours of energy. But on average we use eight. So what do we do? We say, how often do you have a party? We say maybe, I don't know, once a month, once every two months, that size. Okay? So what we'll do is we'll say we're going to size the system for 10 kilowatt hours a day, and when you need the extra 15, okay, try as much cooking as you can during the day, during the week, coming up, try little parts in summer, if you can. But it's going to be winter, run a generator. So then you've got a generator, run a generator for two or three hours, so that you can do that extra cooking on that particular day. You know? And then you say, but I'm still using kettle, it's not ideal with, you know, I've gone from idealist to realist in the past 10 years. Okay? But it's still better than using a generator 365 days a year. I only mean, need it for two hours now and then. Okay, so one, this, this is real prices. Okay, one kilowatt PV, one kilowatt power converter, 42,000 dollars. One kilowatt is relatively more expensive because you need to still get that inverter. Remember, it's electronics. The cost of a one kilowatt inverter compared to three kilowatt inverter is hardly any difference. Okay, two kilowatt PV, this, this is from here down to the PV. 2.5 kilowatt hour battery bank, 2 kilowatt PV, 3 kilowatt inverter. Why do we get a 3 kilowatt inverter? Well, we want to run all the stuff we're running normally, and we want to run our kettle. The nice thing about a 3 kilowatt inverter is it can run 6 kilowatts for 20 minutes. Depending on the right model, but usually you can run, you can run 6 kilowatts for 20 minutes, and you can run 9 kilowatts for a few seconds. So if you want to put your inverter on a, on a, on a, uh, on a motor, which has a very high draw when it starts, okay, it's going to draw a lot of power out of the inverter. I'm going to put a 9 kilowatt inverter in here and you it for a few seconds. Okay? So your 3 kilowatt inverter has over, over performance here. So that, that just clarify. Yeah. yeah. This is a system where you get your inverter, you get your batteries, and then you also get the photovoltaic cells, and are you including installation in that cost yes, as well? Okay. So if I, for example, spent 42,000 Rand, I would get the photovoltaic cells for the roof, yeah. Uh, I'll get the inverter and the batteries. Okay, there's no batteries in that system. Well, no batteries. Uh, so it's so 2.5 kilowatt per hour, so in that system, 65,000 Rand, I would have all things that I would need to power a lot. Okay, so what you're doing is you power some lights, the TV, your uh, computers, uh, and you power it during a load chain event. Okay, okay. And, and the reason that you've got CV. It's because it's cheaper to make the electricity to charge these batteries with sun than it is to buy the electricity. But I'm going to show you the other the next page, which is battery only system. Okay. And that's slightly different process. How okay. big physical size? How big is the 43,000 system? Is there only root space in Okay, so okay, so let's talk about efficiency. The panels are 18% efficient. Okay? Between 15 and 18, it's 18, 16, say 16 percent just to be you know conservative. Okay, so Anybody know what 16% emission means on the solar panel? Yeah. At what, at how many watts per square meter? I don't do this in non science center events, so okay? I just give you four answers. But this is a science center. Okay? So we, and don't use Google. Okay? So how many watts per square meter does the sun hit the ground okay, at sea level at 25 degrees Celsius for the less than 5 kilometer an hour meter? Hmm? Close, 1,000. Okay, you get the top marks. Okay, so you got about 10 out of 10 and you've got to Okay, so, okay. But it's fine, we all 10 out of 10 tonight because we're all here. Okay, so you've got, you really got the 10 because you're just here. You've got the bonus marks. Okay, um, so, okay, we're running at 60% efficiency. How many watts per square meter are we getting out of the solar panel? 600. 16%? 600. 600. 160. 160. So we're getting 160 watts per solar panel. And the solar panel is half a square meter, so we're getting about 300 watts per square meter. Okay? So we take four square meters. Four square meters. Approximately. Depending on the kind of solar panel. Then for it's covered at 13%. Probably crystalline at about 16, one crystalline at about 18, and you can get really expensive for about 22%. Okay. Um, and so there we look at the science, great. We look at two kilowatt PV because we're running more things. Uh, we actually have one kilowatt PV and three kilowatt inverter. <coughs> Um, and then you can get a bigger system. And the next page is battery only. So, okay, this is see, four hours of load chilling, 1.6 kilowatt battery, and a big load inverse, 25,000, lighting and LEDs, but I think you can run more than that. Okay? Um, because you're a big load inverter, so you could run a kettle, or you could run it all the time. But if you forget to run it before load chilling, you can quickly run it. What you should actually do is just run the kettle before load chilling, okay, and then put the water in the like, top. Okay? Um, 
And then, but if you get, doesn't matter. Uh, we have a field in our so we can, you know, roll it out. Okay. But the sun shining as well, the batteries are put in any case. Uh, and then you've got this one, light and electric computers, light flight. So flight's not including head rise. This one includes, you know, other things like head rise and so on. So, for example, one of the things we're looking at is um, putting a system in a headline salon, I mean, in an air salon. They've got three headlines running there, 1.6, 1.75 kilowatts each. They need to run it for an hour during a two and a half hour virtual event. Okay, that's part of the system. And we're busy doing it with metering. We've got to put a meter on there to see how much we actually use it. We're doing another meeting job in a building where what happens is when there's a load chain event, the lifts are now designed to go to the next floor. So now, if you can alter it or your person in a wheelchair, I'm not saying that's the same thing, okay? But whatever the case is, maybe you get out the lift, which is nice, you're not stuck in the lift, but you can't walk up and down the stairs for whatever reason. So you're stuck there for two hours. Maybe you forgot your cell phone, you know? Maybe you can take tablets every hour. You know, it might not be all that great. So what people want is they want their lifts to keep running. And then they don't want to buy generators, because generators are smelly and noisy and so on, and not always pleasant to put it in parts of this. So we do the measuring program at the moment to see how much kilowatt hours wants to keep the mind of a lift system. Okay? And yes, it might be expensive, but maybe the person doesn't care about that, they're more interested in their life. And then we just tell you about the CDs on our roof. Okay? Let's go back here so they don't get too distracted. Okay? So, my wife and I finally got to points in our life, after many, many years, okay, of saying, now I can finally afford to buy a C class of CD. Okay? And it was standard in 2008, I think, in 2008. And then I asked we decided okay, that we actually going to put 20,000 men on the roof, TV, and we put 100,000 men into refined to marriage for education. And the reason we decided to do it at the time is because the government announced feeding tariffs. And they said, in November 2008, I was invited to Parliament because I really knew the people, I would really been doing this research for five years, and I was in Parliament and I heard from the government, we are going to take feeding tariffs in six months. I'm like, wow, I'm ready. I'm going to spend money now. I'm going to do investments. I'm going to be really, had a friend with an electrical business, invested in his business, we got really nothing out. Because I didn't know at the time that governments often make announcements that they had no intention of doing this. <laughs> and South Africa, South Africa is not the first. We found, you know, ESCOM benchmarks against Enel, which is Italy's electricity producer. And if you look at Italy over the past 20 years, they've done exactly what we've done. They said, we're going to have any tariffs, and then they've erected it. Okay? How do you prevent it? When you create, South Africa's got 35, 25 laws, 10 standards, okay, two documents to fill in to get their metering, or put in tariffs. And we're, Germany has got two laws. One standard and one document. Okay? So that's pretty easy. And one of those laws is the Occupational Health and Safety Act. So you're all in support of my reading. So you've got to put in one law. You've got to put in one document. And you've got to follow one standard. Not like that. So it's easy to do. We just follow it. Here's also, they have no jetting. Put the prices up 20%. Everybody complains that they let the prices stay alive. It's not like so there's a peak in that law. I didn't know that. In 2009, just tell me to stop because I'm almost finished. But uh, in 2009, I met a guy called Dr. Herman Sheer in America. He was the guy that put Peter Tarrant um in Germany in 1991 and 1980. Just, okay. just clarify Peter Tarrant. Remember, I showed you that graph where it was costing 10 cents per kilowatt to buy electricity from, from the city in 1991, 12 grand per kilowatt to put it yourself? So, why would anybody do that? Yes, if you off the grid, you don't have electricity, you know, then you might want to do that. Okay. You might want to get generated. So, until five years ago, who was the biggest user of PV panels in South Africa? Tell them. Why? Because they have systems in the Karoo. They they've got to transmit you know, all over the country. So they've got their backup stations, backup generators. And backup generators are expensive to run, so they use PV panels. Okay. They put lots of cameras to try and prevent them from disappearing. Okay. Um, so, anything can happen in the middle of the night. Okay, so you need a feed-in tariff. Now, it's not like, so the government says, but we need feed-in tariffs for, um, for PV systems. Okay? Because we want to incentivize people to put a system in. So South Africa said, there was a lady from Sharp who emailed in about 2010, what's happening with feed-in tariffs? He doesn't know how to do. I said, well, what's your interest? So she said, well, I have to work for Sharp. And we spent five years working with the South African government developing the laws for feed-in tariffs. Okay, and there's uh, anything, it was all ready in 2008. 
key off my head. Okay, this is the kind of contact you get when you just start doing stuff and publicizing stuff and people start emailing you. Okay. So I said, well, nothing's happening. You know? And uh, we started paying for a levy on our electricity in 2009, which was initially uh, two cents, then it was three and a half cents, now the government wants to put up to four and a half cents. So we get to be paying for feeding tariffs. We've been paying since 2009. Feeding tariffs So feeding tariffs is the higher price you need to pay, but as you know, we crossed that point. So Germany. Got to you know when I said 20% by 2020? Germany got to 20% by 2011. Okay? And they got to good parity last year. Which meant that the cost of making electricity from PV panel was cheaper than the feed in tariff. So they, they dropped the feed in tariff. And everybody said, they can't do that. But they didn't drop it for any of the agreements that they signed for 20 years. So all those people that have been pulled up to that point, they still get their money going forward. Okay? And then what Germany said is, okay. Something called Fukushima And within a week, 100,000 people marched in Germany. They didn't break anything. What they did is they broke the government's back. Okay? It's more important than just breaking other stuff. Okay? And they got the German government to say, by 2023, we're going to switch off our nuclear power stations. And that created a huge impetus in the science and engineering communities to make this happen. Okay? Which keeps Germany with over 300,000 people working in renewable energy at the forefront of renewable energy. Okay? Where we should be, actually. We have more sun than they two and a half times as much actually. Okay. So now they incentivize battery systems. They say, yes, we're going to have a problem. We're going to solve the battery problem. Let's incentivize battery systems. So there's a feeding tariff in Germany for battery systems. Okay. So we can talk about that a lot. Okay. But then you've got now, just as an example, uh, four decades ago, a little suburb called Atlanta started up. For all the wrong reasons, but this is what happens with special economic zones. The government says, for the first two years, we're going to pay your wages. For the next 10 years, you're not going to have to pay tax on profit. Okay? So investors will go to a special economic zone. So that because we've got, I think, five or six special economic zones happening right now. And you get all kinds of incentives to go and be there from anywhere in the world. Okay? And that's kind of our feeling to When you build a power station, okay? The off taker says, I'll take it off. But what if the off taker closes? The government's going to provide a guarantee for 30 years to break the power station, even if it's a private power station. So the government is even on the hook for a private power station because it's an underwriter. If you know about insurance, and you go buy insurance on somebody, and they take some risk, and they pass risk to a third party, it's called an underwriter. Four grades or whatever. Okay? So that's underwriting. The government does that. So they are feeding tariffs all over this. The government spends five billion rand a year giving incentives to the car industry in South Africa. That car that I showed you, the jewel in South Africa, needed 10 billion rand. They could have just cut the incentives. Okay? They didn't need to. They could have just stopped wasting money. Okay? And then they would have made enough money for South Africa to have its own electric car. And then they would have said, every government minister must have one of these. Okay? So here we are. We have. Uh, okay, so this tells you. How to calculate how long it's going to take to charge your battery. Okay. Okay. So we've got 200 hours of 48 volts, okay, and we've got 255 watts, 36 volt panels, which are 7 amps, 36 times 7, 255. But now you've got a 48 volt battery, but you can't charge it with a 36 volt battery. You need something for the potential difference. Okay. You need a higher voltage here to charge a lower voltage there. Okay. Same with the water pipe, that kind of thing. Okay. So we're going to put three in series. We're going to have seven amps at 108 volts. And then we're going to use our MVPT controller. Remember that maximum power contractor? The maximum power contractor, one of the nice things is you can put 108 volts in, and you can get 48 volts out. Okay? And then the 48 volts will be 21 amps. So now you've solved the problem of having mismatching solar panels and um, batteries. Okay? So now if the, we've got 200 amp hours, but we're going to use 100. We've got 200 amp hours, but we're going to use 100 volts. Okay? So 21 amps goes into 105 times, so we need 5 hours of charge. But we have, when you're charging lithium-ion, sorry, lead acid batteries, you've got a 20% inefficiency, or 80% efficiency. You need to divide by 80% to get 6 hours to charge your battery, assuming that that percent of the bridge. So there you are, you can work out, you can all go home tonight, and you can all work out how many watt hours does this thing work exactly, you know, and taking averages and working out, making spreadsheets of time and what's what's hours and so on and then we're what size battery breaks I need, how much electricity I need to charge. And if it's a thing, 
where you can charge it in an hour. So you can put a really big system in there. You can just use more electricity for less time. We spoke about this a little bit. So if I'm spending 3,000 rand a month on electricity, and I can do net metering where I buy and sell at the same price without a service fee, that's just the assumptions. Okay? I can spend 200,000 rand on my system, which at 10% over 20 years, without batteries, okay, is 2,000 rand a month. There's this nice thing that works in spreadsheets. You know, when you do a CapEx cash flow calculation, PMT equals PMT, try that on your spreadsheets, see what comes up. Okay? You need the formula, I've got the spreadsheet, I'll give it to you. Okay? So, what happens is that you, um, you work out your, your, your cap, you say, I need to pay 200,000, and at 10% over 20 years, 200,000 is 2,000 rand a month. Approximately. Just divide by 100, you get your monthly cap, you find Okay? And at 7% per annum over 10 years. So if, you, if, you, if you've got money, let's suppose you're retired, okay? And you've earned an interest, okay? That's 6 or 7%. And if you can earn more by putting your own system in, then you're borrowing at 7% to get your own money. Okay? If you've got the borrowing from the bank, you want at 10% or whatever, okay? then it's a different calculation, it's a different refining time, and all kinds of things. I've got spreadsheets that do all that. But the thing is, if you're going to spend 2,000 rand a month instead of 3,000 rand a month, how much are you going to save? 1,000 rand a month. But you've got to borrow to earn 1,000 rand. Then you've got to take it out of the bond, or you've got to decide not to buy the car next year, you've got to make decisions. What I would like is you walk into Cape Town International Airport, you see this massive big sign over there on Monday night. There's a huge sign for this fabulous new C class, oh, sorry, S class coupe. Nice two million rand car. And someone's gonna buy that. You know? Probably Zoom and Sun or something. But you know, um, you know that it's gonna go buy that car. But I would much rather well, they spend the two million rand making that electricity and becoming a power station. And it's just a choice. And one is that you're gonna walk into that that um, airport, and we're going to see this big advert saying a photovoltaic system or battery backup system, becoming a power station is an aspirational item. There's something else. I'm in the IT industry. Okay? And I started in the IT industry a long time ago. And when I started working 30 years ago, IT was a necessary evil. The same thing you had to have because otherwise you needed to have 400 accountants doing another country. You could have one account for the computer. Okay? So, etc. And nowadays, some companies have three people on their board of directors, IT experts. They've got a, they've got a client services IT director, they've got a notepad, you know, iPad, and they've got a technical IT director. Some of these become the three IT directors. And back then, the finance director was the IT director. You know? So that's how things have changed. This is where energy is. And now, energy is a necessary. In 20 years' time, every board of directors is going to have an energy director. You see what it's all? Okay, the community power stations is broken by getting better prices. And water. We have this big problem that we're running out of water. But we live next to the sea. And if we can make electricity cheaper and we can buy it, maybe we can say, well, hang on a sec. We just will spend what we're spending now and we'll desalinate water. And there's more presentations. And here's my business card. Okay. If you hit the lights on, please. And let's just give David a round of applause. Right. I can see that we, we've had a couple of guests that have joined us from overseas. I can see that we had Jairus from Kenya, we've had Sebastian from India, and I think we've also got, this could be, oh no, it's Jairus. So sometimes we get uh, go from Nepal, and obviously, as you know, Nepal had had a, a terrible time, and uh, that obviously means that uh, they're going to have to start thinking about power generation for themselves. If you want to see forms of wind farms, Okay. You want some questions? Yes. Can you show us the cash flow? You want to see the cash flow? It was empty. Oh, the cash flow was empty? Oh, okay. Let's just go to cash flow. It was uh, almost the last slide. No, there's another one. There's one outside the presentation. All right. While you're looking for that, I know that a lot of you. We're listening, and, and some of the stuff went in this way and came out the other, and then you were going to ask, so now how do we get ourselves off the grid? Because that would interest me, and if I'm not going to get myself off the grid by buying myself a Mercedes C-Class, then what would it cost me to get an inverter or to get photo photovoltaic, the PV cells on the roof and that type of thing? Just while I was looking at his spreadsheet there, to give you my experience, 
we were in a situation where, as a family, two kids, two parents, uh, there was a problem when power shedding started, or load shedding. Why? Because all the lights go off. Of course, the TV goes off, which is not a bad thing. I think that's a good thing. But you try and explain that to two kids under the age of 10 when their TV program goes off and there's no light in the house and they can't do homework and that type of thing. So we decided, obviously, to look for an option that would save us from load shedding. And we went the route of getting an inverter. So all that happens is they attach this device, they put it inside your house and connect it to your main board. Then they connect a little sub board with the circuits that you once switched on when the inverter takes over. So you've got two boards, your main board and your sub board. The sub board is only the circuits that are going to go on when the inverter kicks in. Does that make sense? It stays on. It stays on. So, so what happens is the power switches off, and as soon as that does, the inverter acts like a UPS, an uninterrupted power supply. So you don't have to go and switch it on. You don't have to wait four or five seconds for the change over. When you switch the lights off, you might see a slight dip in the lights, but other than that, you don't notice anything else. Computers stay on, TV stay on, the works. Um, well, it depends on what your needs are in your house. In our circumstance, we needed a 3.6 kilowatt system. Is that right? A 3.6 kilowatt system. And we got a bank of, I think it was 12 batteries, the 105 amp batteries. Uh, so the batteries are like car batteries, and, and they are heavy and big. And I think including all the parts and installation was about 23,000 rand. But what does that mean? When the lights go off, when the load shedding stops, all our lights stay on, all the bedrooms with computers, TVs, whatever it is, stays on. The only thing that switches off is our kitchen, because that's obviously got all the appliances that might draw heat. Uh, but the fridge is on a separate circuit, so that stays on. And uh, that's it. And, and the pool filter uh, switches off. And, the, and obviously the keys. So, so those things are on the main board. On the sub board are all the lights, and then the plugs in the rooms that have got computers and stuff like that. It took a day to install, and we now don't experience that shit. Uh, well, uh, you can speak to that. I mean, do you supply the I have to do installations. Uh, if you come to me, I can give you some numbers. But I can look at it. Yeah. Well, there, there are some places that specialize in selling the inverter. And then what you do is you go, and they will give you a registered installer. And then you can say, for example, if you just want only the lights to go on, and maybe three or four plants, you can get a much cheaper system, maybe for five or six grand. It all depends on what your needs are. <laughs> Sorry? Correct, correct. So now, at, at some stage, I would love to upgrade to get PV cells on the roof, and then those will charge the batteries as opposed to using SCOM, which I think is obviously a better option. All right. So, so again, this is how GB Port runs the battery. The other GB Port is in Okay. Yes. Yeah. That's a good question. If you have a rental property, can you pay back? Because then everything that you can appreciate your new clients, and I see that it's a little bit by the end of the year. Okay, so thank you. You know, I think if you're, we need to fund the rental property, you run it as a business. Yes, you should be able to. You should speak to your accountant that there are rules, but what you can and can't play. But you must also remember something else that Dr. Herman just said. He said quite often the incentives are put in place to prevent explosions. So what you should do first is you should see if there's a cash flow advantage when you're doing the project. And if you can, in addition, get a benefit from the government, then try and get that benefit as well. But don't make them a wiser within the system getting that government benefit. Because that's what the government wants you to do. They want to put all kinds of stuff in your way that you don't make the first decision. Um, recently, in Berkeley, you talked about uh, what is the highest payment for 
warranties. Okay, so typically you get a five year warranty on an inverter, you can extend it to 10 years. And in our, in our designs, not in this particular spec, but on a much more complicated spreadsheet, we assume that the inverter will have to replace all the top here. So we look at the cash flow projection, you see a dip in the cash flow in the top here, because we're assuming that the last problem. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I mean, I must tell you that if you picture the, the, the ten-year outlook within the next ten years, I think technology would have improved so much as you've seen the growth already that there'll be far more options available at a much lower cost. I mean, we really, we really have solar panels and TV that were guaranteed for twenty years, okay, up to eighty percent. Over time, the performance of the solar panel increases. So, I've got a spreadsheet which deals with that, you know, lessening as well. But the I can't do that here because it's like an hour to show you how to switch it. Okay, so the, um, the thing is that uh, nowadays the performance is um, that after I think 15 years it will be 90 percent. And those those are called bankable panels. And what happens is they're underwritten by big insurance companies uh, in Europe and America and so on. So you have that guarantee in those sort of panels. If you don't buy Chinese panels off the of, of, of back of a truck. And you might not be getting it, you know, the migration six months. But there are Chinese panels that are being installed and they're good, but they're also all bad. There's also bad stuff. Yeah. Compliancy. Compliancy? So, uh, what, there's so many rules and regulations in South Africa that it's difficult to try and comply with everything unless you're an electrical engineer. And as it is, the government says you need to be an electrical engineer to get a certification in the certificate. If you happen to live on the West Coast and you go to the Spike per municipality, um, then you know, I know someone who does installations and he gets permission over the phone. Okay? Um, so it depends where you are. But what, what, what we do in our designs, what I'm doing in my designs, uh, is I'm using the American National Electric Code of Article 690. And that's wiring sizes, inverter sizes, over performance, uh, uh, voltage drops, everything. So then we make sure that those systems perform. Obviously, the AC side. It's easy to certify. Uh, the DC side should also be easy to certify because factories use DC equipment. And it's very difficult to um, just get a normal DC electrician to um, certify the DC side. But if you've got an answer to that, yeah. please, let's see what I'm asking. Last question. Okay. Yeah. What, what does it cost you in this compound to charge for the battery? That's a good question. What will it cost? So if, you, if you need your uh, Let's suppose you've got five kilowatt hours that you want to charge, okay? And it's going to take you um, 20, 20 amps, you know, for five hours, which is going to be 20 times 220, four kilowatts, four kilowatts, okay? Um, so you're going to use uh, 20 kilowatt hours, which is going to cost you uh, 35 to 40 amps a day. Yeah. Assuming that the batteries are empty, our batteries don't go below 95 percent at our house from normal load shedding. And it's only 50% and it's yeah. No, it's 50%. You can only take your battery down to 50%. So in other words, we're in 200 amp hours, 200 amp hours, and I'm saying that's the great one that it costs you. You might have to that hour battery. And if you get a test store with your mind, then you can be in a store with that. Okay, yeah. Uh, you so, uh, no, I wish it were there. Yeah. Even in a state, you know, I've been doing presentations to the states, you know, wine estates and uh, golf estates and grants the body corporates of buildings. and say, why did you become, it is one company in the Western Cape that has been doing this for many years. I was actually first surprised. Well, and it's very good. Okay. What they're doing is they're buying their interest in bulk and then they're not selling it to the tenants. Okay. So there's all kinds of benefits of being in that particular complex and cheaper people buy electricity. There's all kinds of things. And they're also making profit. You know, so they they do a lot more maintenance using that money <coughs> on the board that you stop. So you know but you know, typically I go to body corporate and I say, then they say, but what happens if someone stops paying? And I say, if you've got three hundred people in your board of state. You know, if you're saving 30% of the money, a third of those people have got to stop paying before you go to pop. And if one stops paying, you're going to find out in a month. You're not going to wait like the government for six years until you realize that he hasn't paid you. You know, so it's just a matter of a society that 
There's a thing in, in, in America that people start these companies called Google and Facebook and Microsoft. And when you go look at them, you discover that Paul Allen, it's not everybody, but he's the 50th richest person in the world or something. And he started Microsoft with Paul Gates, who's the richest person in the world. And there's another hundred people that are all that are all multi billionaires in Microsoft. Okay? Um, but the reason, they're all still there. And there's a big thing called trust. And in South Africa's environment, we have so much theft of all kinds of things. You know, even about white other criminals. And so much, you know, if there's, if there's corruption going on, if there's a person being corrupted and there's a person doing the corrupting, who's doing the corrupting? I'm not going to say the big names, you know, uh, but someone's paying for all that. Of course, we're paying on the other side. Okay? But this is the problem, we don't trust each other. You go to my website, my power station, of those top left videos, a one minute video of if we trust each other, what would happen to our environment? So, this is our problem. If, if, we could, if we could stick the course, we would have Microsofts and Facebooks in South Africa. That's the fact that there's a barrier to them. Can we go ahead and put there and we'll come to you, okay? okay. Two questions. One is the price of batteries coming down like, as rapidly as the price of PV, or is it also to come down? And the second question how much would the EOS land through the electricity of PV panels? And of course, would you? So, the piece of the leave. Thanks for coming. Um, the, okay, so just to give you an example, my battery bank that I installed, that those big batteries two years ago, okay, I bought them at cost price because I'm in the industry. Okay, the same price is now what I pay for. So it's come down, you know, that's 10, 15, 20 percent. Okay, um, the um, so the prices are going down, not as fast as people. But as the demand grows, the price will. So now, with the with the review engine centers okay, in Germany pushing engineering, and with Elon Musk pushing engineering, we'll see those prices come down. So there's a thing called the learning curve or the growth curve, and when everybody says, "Okay, we're now going to work with batteries," and you don't see the prices, you know, the thing with PV as well is when you look at the efficiency of PV panels, we have been at between sort of 16 to 18 percent efficient on modern crystalline and polycrystal crystal lines for 50 years. But thin form panels, when we bought our thin form panels, okay, they were 9 percent efficient, and now they're 13 percent efficient. Okay? And within five years, they're going to be 18 percent efficient. And five years after that, they're going to be 25 percent efficient. So the thin form technology is rapidly ramping up to become more and more efficient. Okay? Video stats are, okay, so let me expand on video stats, you can turn it from right. Okay, so in this case, there's a pump, the water, the, the, you have a big uh, um, dish, points at a central station, boils water, and moves the pump up and down. Okay, correct. The heliostat distracts the sun. Oh, sorry, one of those things. The heliostat is the mirror. The PV panel sits on a thing that turns and distracts the sun. So I was talking about steady engine. You get the maximum. So the thing I mentioned was called a steady engine. The heliostat is the mirror okay, that moves around and faces a big tower, and the government's as it's called the 100 megawatt. Yeah, so that's how it's a CSP plant, but I mean, you, on your own PV, on your roof, if you put it on a, you know, on a, like a pillar that can, that can rotate and track the sun, because, well, I mean, you normally put your view kind of facing north, yeah. but the sun, you know. Okay, so that's not what you just said, that's called a tracker. Yeah. Okay. But so, what you can do is you can get a tracker, okay, and then there's an expensive solution to follow the sun, and there's a cheap solution. The cheap solution is called using your computer. There's a computer known as the sun, you know, that's just 40 pounds of the sun. Okay? Um, and then, uh, but, you know, as I was saying to you before uh, we started the talk, you know, five, ten years ago, when it was so expensive for PV panels, you wanted to make sure they were facing perfectly more, that they tracked the sun, because then you've got 30 to 40% more efficiency. Okay? Nowadays, it's okay, you wouldn't bother with it, but if you wanted it, you can. You just have to remember that you put motors and things in that system, and they're going to break. Okay? So, and they're going to need maintenance. So, you know, rather add another kilowatt on your roof and you know, spend the money on that, okay, then save a kilowatt of money and put a track in and then have to deal with, you know, maintenance issues. Yeah, we're going to take two more questions. One here and one here. Yeah, back there. Okay, so we're going to try and buy the sales of the price factory of 100 years ago. Um, how does the battery factory in versus the battery factory? Okay, so okay, so it's probably bad to answer that question. 
Okay, so I you can I will put as much TV as I can on my roof, number one, because I will cut my roof wide enough. Okay. It depends, you know. Big gotta remember, we as homeowners are gonna be paying because too bad we cannot go out and Okay? Big businesses, maybe this business maybe spending one and ten, one and twenty kilo an hour. So it's you know, but they can put a hundred kilo system on the roof and they can do it at one and ten a kilo an hour. Okay, so they can make electricity cheaper than we can because we put in a smaller system and the economies of scale is bigger. So what I would do is I would say, okay, how much electricity can I make? Can I be cash positive <coughs> in the first instance? Um, let me take another client. I've got to run a call center. Okay? And we can get you back because it's kind of easy for me to work with So now the call center is a bottle map. Okay? And if you read the uh, video on gold mat, if you lose an hour of production on a bottle map, you lose that hour forever. Okay? If you run a factory 12 hours a day, if you've got two hours of load shedding, that means you've got to run a factory for 14 hours a day, you can catch up that production. If you run a factory 20, 24 hours a day, which is usually 22 and a half hours a day, and you lose an hour on that factory, you lose it forever. Okay. So the thing is, obviously a call center needs a lot less electricity, and there's a battery bank which runs the whole call center and all the other computers in the business long enough for the generator to start. They don't have TV yet, but they've been looking at, I've been talking to them for a long time, and I believe they rely on the cost. Which means that their cost of electricity is going to be more than the cost of making their own electricity. So in that, in that environment, they will then say, from a business, see, business people don't want to do things that don't make business financial sense. Unless there's another caveat, which there is now, which is low check. And also, that you know, they have eight hours of diesel reserve in the, in the tank of the generator. And if they happen to have a stage for load shedding units, they use all that diesel in the day. Okay? And now if everybody phones a diesel supplier at 4 o'clock this afternoon, says please deliver by 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. A lot of them are going to be empty. Okay? So people have got backup, even though the EIA says so no, you're not allowed to store diesel on site. Okay? So what I'm saying to you is, you know, if 25% of your employees have got diesel cars, tell them to keep the tanks, but in the worst case scenario, tell them all to come to work. <laughs> <laughs> because then you can siphon the diesel out of the tanks, leave you know, into your no. So that's kind of a good solution, easy solution, right? Okay. So, and that's you know, if you're going to get a you know, a 25 you know hour tank, you're going to have to get a DRA. But you've got a 25 hour tank in your diesel car. So, and your cost wise. So, so the, the the thing is that a diesel generator costs about five to six rand per kilowatt hour. Run. Escom say that I'm going to cost them two rand forty. I don't believe. <coughs> Okay. I believe it costs you less than the amount of run out Okay, um, which is a lot more than that, than what they're charging us. But there's big diesel, there's big diesel turbines. Okay, um, so I would say that you should have enough battery backup to run the office section of the business, so that keeps running regardless of what's happening in the factory. You should have enough battery backup so that you can start your generator. Okay, whatever it is that you need to do to keep the generator running. Or have running such a factory doesn't stop, and you should feed you on the roof to reduce your consumption. And over time, you can add more TV panels and batteries running. Right? But if you've got a loom, you know, a textile machine, 2.2 meter wide with a radiator running at a thousand bits per minute, which means it's putting a thousand threads and two a meter in every minute, you're putting a thousand pieces of string yarn into that, making you know, a piece of fabric this, this much. You know, that wire, you get a lot of electricity. You're not going to get it from a battery. Okay, so that's not now. You need to know now. Yeah. Did I speak some middle yet? Yeah. A number of years ago, um, I installed a smart meter or a car meter in my house. Um, and I was involved in making those things, and we quickly found out that people who tried to reverse the things um, to stop them working. It was very easy to overcome that. The problem now is that when we feed power into the grid, the meter still increments and charges. Okay, so right. So there's different kinds of meters. Okay, there's old fashioned this meter, which slows down and goes backwards. Yes. Okay. Then there's a, a smart meter, and the thing about a smart meter is that they're programmable from remote. Okay. So, and as some of the government can log into the meter and say, okay, if you supply the group, we're going to charge you to supply the group because we don't want to supply the group. Okay? Um, the ideal situation, in my opinion, 
is that uh, when you supply the grid, uh, you have to meet the stops. Which means you don't have to spend the 10,000 rand in equipment to stop it from supplying the grid, and then at least the city doesn't have to buy that much electricity. Uh, obviously, the ideal ideal situation okay, is that they're paying for it to supply. Um, so, I mean, if we can just get some more. Then I'll talk about IPPs. Just while he's taking a sip. Obviously, the ideal would be that we could generate our own and give the surplus back. But, but you know, our government and their wisdom have said that they don't want people to get inverters and generators because then you're not going to be relying on them for electricity. That you generate your own and they make huge losses and they can't run a municipality. Huge losses and they can less support. Well, okay, let, let me just, okay, let's just look at that for a minute. I've got my special plan. I've got my system to run. Let's just look at this. Let's suppose someone's spending a thousand rand a month on electricity. Okay? And let's suppose that the government, the city's making 500 rand profit. Okay? And let's suppose that I can put a system in which costs me 700 rand a month using the energy grid without a service fee. Okay? So the government's going to make 350 rand profit. And let's suppose I go to the government and I say to the government, I will give you 150 rand of my savings. Okay? And it so happens, yeah. And let's say equals that plus that. Then the government's making their 500 rand, and I'm saving uh, that minus that. So um, this I'm, 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 I'm saving one fifty. So I'm saving. This should be okay. so the, the thing is, I'm saying that I'll give. I'm saving 300 rand. Okay, so I should actually put it down like this, equals this minus that. I'm saying 300 rand. I'm giving 150 rand to the government, so they still make their 500 rand, and I'm making that minus that profit. So I'm saying 15 percent, but the government's not losing any money. Okay? They're making 350 profit. They're making 350 because they've got 100 percent profit margin. Okay, or 50 percent, which is the cost of sale. 100 percent profit margin, 50 percent cost of sale. And they're actually making more than that for Ireland. Because they're buying the average of 57 cents and they're selling it to me at 96. Okay, that's including that, take the bet out, it's still three times. Okay? So the I'm just saying this is an easy way to do the number because I'm just saying assume 100 percent profit margin, 50 percent cost of stock. So here, 50% of a thousand is 500. Here, 50% of 700 is 350. I would say 300. Okay? And the government would lose 150. I say the government. I will uh, give you the 150 and I will save this 150. Okay? And uh, so, guess what? I go see Ian Nelson in November 2013, it was then, and I show him this. Okay? And I say, not only this, I will, you can put this 150 rand on my waste bill, which means that the 14 rand of VAT that you have paid, you can keep. So, you actually make more. Not only that, in Nevada and California, Utilities have proven that people doing net metering okay, actually make them more money. Okay? And the reason that happens is because the grid is used less. So now the problem in South Africa is we have old and unreliable transformers in our system. Okay? We used to install transformers that lasted 25 years, and then we decided to do everything with something called, uh, what do you call it? When you go and get the tender. So now what does the tender do? The tender says, okay, I can buy this transformer for 15 million rand, and I can buy that transformer for 10 million rand. And the specs are the same. That the one comes from A class business and the one comes from Z class business. Okay, so I'm going to buy the Z class business and the transformer lasts 10 years instead of 25 years. Yeah, Transformers last 100 years. Theoretically. But I, I, I went to a transformer switch conference three years ago. And they told me they were transformer and switch experts. I can show you the presentation. Okay? And they showed me the transformers are not lasting as long as they should last. Well, they're being overrated. So, so what happens is now, if we can take our demand off the transformer, then our, our underrated transformers will overrate whatever transformers could last long. So yes, I do think a jet engine should run forever. As long as you keep getting it through, as long as you don't take it from there. If you keep flying at 30,000 feet, the jet engine will never go. But the problem is, we take off when we land. Okay? 
So a company, we, you know, the definition of a good lab is when you walk away from. So, but the point about this is, yeah, okay, this 500 grand is not the same as that 500 grand. Because this 500 grand, the city of Cape didn't have to buy this 150 grand of electricity. And I took my load off the transformer. Okay? And after a certain amount, I can supply the transformer with the electricity. Well, so, again, you mentioned this fact that the city of Cape Town is, it's not just Cape Town, that's from as well. Uh, charging as a penalty to put power into the grid. Correct. And it's, in my case, it will be 400 pounds a month. Correct. So and that's the 400 pounds that I'm actually looking to save by using a photovoltaic system. Correct. So there are ways in which I can, I, I will generate excess power that I will not put it into the grid. I will simply shut the system down uh, until the lighting amount equals. Correct. That's exactly. So now, one of the things I've been saying to ESCOM and the city, and I've spoken to the top people in the DA, the top people in the ANC, the top people in the ACTP, okay, etc. I've been to Parliament, I've spoken physically to these people, unfortunately not to the cabinet, but I now know some of the most violent personally, so I'm getting there. Okay. Um, the, I don't know what to say. What do I want to say? What's your question? We were talking about the charge that the local utility Right. So, thank you. So what I so what I said to them is, look, we can either start working together now, where we become part of the generation platform as our own as a business owner, okay? Or you can wait to 2017, where we equip parity of batteries. When we equip parity of batteries, we won't need you anymore, and we will tell you that you can disconnect us because we don't need you anymore. And for the two days a year or four days a year that we need. Extra electricity will produce a generator for those four days. Just like my example, when we had a part, we did 25 kilowatt hours that day, but on a normal day we had eight. Okay? So that's what we will do. Okay? And you won't have any choice in the matter. And this is not Spain, where Spain can tell you, we will charge you. Okay? And they've got a legal system to support them. And then when, if people are working together, and they happen to live near the sea, and they can desalinate the water, okay? Then they will get free water in the river common. And they can supply the land with free water. So there's, there's all of that going on. I don't want us to get to a point where we tell the government that we don't need you anymore. I want us to get to a point where we all work together to make South Africa better because my, I found a smelter once, two years ago. And I said to the smelter, of the primary electricity energy manager, I said, how much energy do you get electricity to use right now? And he said, one gigawatt. I said, okay, how much would you like to use in five years' time? He said, we would like to use two gigawatts now. Okay? Not in five years' time. So they really are 50%. So this is, okay, how much are you expecting to use in five years' time? He said, 800 megawatts. So they're expecting to use 20% less than they have now in five years' time. So then I said, okay, imagine that you could work with a group of homeowners who could make that electricity for you. In other words, you need that extra one gigawatt. 1.2 gigawatts actually, okay? And homeowners use 17 gigawatts on the grid at peak time. And imagine if we could take 1.2 gigawatts off the grid 24 hours a day, okay? And that discussion is not happening, okay? And I would like it very much to happen because I believe that homeowners can make electricity 24 hours a day. And I believe that it's the fastest way for us to not remove ourselves from the grid but become part of the, the, the solution. I'm going to step in here because I know it's quite late. For those of you that would like to ask David questions afterwards, Dave, you are you happy to say a little bit about Okay, let me show you wind turbine videos. Well, I need to show you wind turbine videos. I would just like to say thank you very much to David for sharing his knowledge and expertise. Hopefully you guys are going to need a little bit more information and maybe some ideas in terms of how you can perhaps protect yourself from load shedding. Uh, if you want to come and chat to me afterwards, I can give you some numbers. If you want to chat to David and get some numbers, and there were some people over there who had some contacts as well in the inverter business. Uh, hopefully, we can help you guys uh, come up with better solutions to manage the load shedding at home. So, let's give David a round of applause.